welcome to Nitography Farm. I'm Patricia. I'm coming to you from a very rainy summer's day here in the middle of Norway. It has been several months since I checked in here on the vlog. I have been very busy bringing my new lambs onto the farm and acclimating them into the flock. It is summertime and I spend most of my time up in the forest. I wanted to uh, pop in today to share some updates with you, uh, share an online class that I'm about to teach, show you some of my finished objects. I hope this vlog finds you uh, taking good care, finding comfort and joy in your making during this very challenging uh, pandemic that we're facing all over the world. So I'd like to begin this vlog by telling you that I will be teaching an online traditional Selbuvalted mitten course beginning September the 5th. Normally, I would be teaching this course at festivals around in Norway, but once the pandemic hit and all of the courses were canceled, I decided that I wanted to spend some time developing and expanding this course over a period of time so that I could really break down the anatomy of the traditional Selbuvalter mittens and show you the technique for knitting these historical mittens from this region of Norway in which I live. I won't go into all of the ins and outs of the course so that you can at your leisure go and read about the course and what I'm offering. It is a six week course it's online. There will be live Zoom check-ins so that we can answer questions, check in on the progress, adjust where we need to adjust. You will have the opportunity to finish a pair of mittens during the course and then we will finish up on October the 14th, which is the traditional Norwegian mitten day or Votadag here in Norway. We will have a celebration of the finished mittens. We will uh, have a mitten parade and grand prize uh, drawings for some beautiful mitten kits. I'll put the link to the course information in the down bar below. And I hope if you are interested in building on your skills or knitting your first pair of Selbuvalter mittens that you'll join us. Make sure you subscribe to my website uh, for additional updates and registration opens up August the 12th next Wednesday. I have been very busy acclimating my lambs into the flock it's been a really good year with my lambs. I have four strong lambs. They're growing well. We are taking to the forest path three times a day. They are energetic and they are growing beautiful lambs wool. In the beginning, of course, I train that little flock and then I have my, my other four that are already trained. But the big challenge is, is to acclimate the whole flock together. And that took me a good six weeks to make sure that the little ones were safe and there was no competition, because there can be, especially uh, during feeding time and so forth. We travel together up the forest path and it's just going beautifully. I still have the challenge of the castration of the two ram lambs coming up but I have waited now for a bit longer and I also have a very sympathetic and understanding vet. She is working with me to make sure that the procedure is going to be safe. Hopefully we will not have the challenges that we faced last year. Other than that, I have shorn the sheep, I have been sorting the wool, and the most exciting thing that happened this spring is that my yarns returned from the mill. The challenge with my first farm yarns is that uh, at the mill, the machinery 
broke that winds the yarn into skeins. When they called to tell me that, I had a choice of waiting. I think it would have been almost two months until the machinery was ready or to take all of my farm yarns on spools. There were, I think, 10 spools, so quite a lot of work that would need to be done by hand in order to skein up my first batch and make it ready for the farm shop. I really debated waiting, but I desperately wanted to get the farm yarns home. And I thought, how hard could it be? I didn't look forward to winding all of the skeins by hand. But I took it slowly. I took it day by day. After the process was done, I do not regret it at all. It really gave me the opportunity to get to know the wool, the quality, and I, I enjoyed the process very much indeed. It was challenging. I needed to get 100 grams in every skein. I'm pretty close. But now, of course, I have to weight each skein. I will have to alter the price based on the weight. They turned out beautifully. So this is my first farm yarns. I hope you can see the luster. I decided to not sort the different colors, but to do a beautiful blending to get this really rich gray color. It turned out exactly as I imagined and from my design meeting with Ingvild down at the mill. It's soft, it's rustic, it's very clean. It's not a strong sheep smell at all. You can tell that it's farm yarn, but I am just, I'm over the moon with it. the luster, the softness, it just turned out better than I imagined. As I've shared in my previous vlogs, my fleeces received the highest grade possible. It was so wonderful to hear the feedback from the mill, just how beautiful it was to work with my fleeces. All of the hard work, all of the cost, everything that's gone into it day by day by day has been worth it. Growing the wool with the sheep in the forest, outside, all year long, even in winter, has really, really made a beautiful result. Those skeins will be available in my farm shop in early autumn. I'm developing the yarn labels now. I'm working out the pricing, making sure that all the costs are covered and also there will be some profit in the skein so that I can continue this work of growing this rare heritage breed of wool. One of the ways that I have offset the cost of raising my sheep and also growing the wool and paying all of the mill fees is that for the last year I have been working on a design collection uh, called the Forest Path Collection. I wanted to find a way to express the work that I'm doing here on the farm to tell the story, but also to be able to support the work until I'm able to grow my flock to a larger size. I had a terrible year last year. I actually lost yet last year. Everything that I invested in my flock, I lost when I lost my lambs. So, the cost of the vets trying to save them, the cost of, yeah, the whole procedures that I went through to find out what, what happened to one of my older rams. There are so many costs, and you have to get to a point where everything is breaking even. I don't have enough sheep to do that now. I don't have enough sheep yet to grow the wool, pay the mill, be able to invest in new lambs to grow. I'm a designer already. 
Uh, as many of you know, I design all sorts of wooden knitting accessories from the trees here on our farm. I use this design work to pay for the process, but really I needed to expand in some way so that I could tell this story and I could continue to protect and grow this wool. So I'm still working on my accessory designs. This is one of my latest designs. This is a large gauge ruler, the 10 centimeter by the four inch that many people have been asking me to design and have available. I created a travel gauge ruler uh, to fit in a project bag because at the time I was knitting mostly mittens. I did use it on garments as I go along maintaining my gauge, but now that I'm designing, I really understand the value of having this larger swatch uh, to check gauge. So it became valuable to me also as a knitter, and I have been developing this new product over time. I have many new products in my farm shop. I have a new Kofta design group. I have many new accessory designs related to my Forest Path collection. You can check that out in my farm shop. And I really do thank everybody that has continued to support me purchasing mitten blockers, sock blockers, all of my knitting accessories. All of that goes into maintaining my little flock of sheep. So anyway, back to my designs. I think in my last vlog, I showed you the original design, which is my forest path hap. This, this hap, of course, really tells the story of the journey on the path into the forest, uh, taking my flock to graze among the trees and in the glade. That hap really tells that story. I don't even think I brought my treasures hap. My second design is my treasures from the forest path hap. I showed it in previous vlogs. I, I keep that one with my bas my foraging basket. So when I go into the forest and I'm foraging, lately I've been foraging for St. John's wort and uh, yarrow plants so that I could create a salvas for my farm shop. But I keep that with my basket to wrap around me so I didn't actually bring it. But that was the last time I think I visited with you. I told the story of the treasures from the forest path hat. So after that, this one, I probably need to block this one again because I use it so often. I haven't worn it out, but I've used it so many times in the spring and summer. This is my picnic on the forest path hap. I want to make sure that I show you the edging. This is my picnic blanket. This is a hap that is actually two designs in one. It is a hap that you can fold over into a very large triangle and you just pop it on as you're taking to the path or taking a stroll or walking wherever you're going. It is perfect for laying out as a picnic blanket. It is a square. It is the traditional hap shape from Shetland. It is designed to reflect the dappled sunlight of spring and summer so that the sunshine uh, really shines through it. And then it has this beautiful edging that I created that reflects the pine cones and the uh, bark on the birch trees. So the last time, just after I visited with you, I released this design. Most afternoons, I pack a picnic. I pack coffee, uh, afternoon tea, uh, sandwiches, biscuits, whatever. I pack and I have a picnic almost every day in the afternoon. I won't do it today because it's uh, raining and a bit miserable, but I'll take coffee. 
So I lay out my picnic, take my beautiful um, mug or teacup, and I lay out a picnic. You can see the photographs um, of this on my farm website and also Instagram and also Ravelry. So that was the third hap. And then the fourth hap I designed called Sunshine on the Forest Path. Now, as you move past springtime and into summer, we have midnight sun. And you can go out at 10, 11, midnight, and walk on the path, and you'll have sunshine. And I chose a deep, heathered, mustard or okra, I think you call it, yellow, because at that time of the evening, it's a rich sunlight. It's not a sharp yellow sun. It's a deep, rich sunlight. And this hap is actually a trapezoid. This is, uh, I also call this my Trunder hap, which I'll tell you, this is the hap from this region of Norway. So it is a very large, this is an extra large hap. I think it has over two meters wingspan. I didn't actually measure the depth of it, but it has a very nice depth. It is, as I say, a trapezoid. So you begin on this end in garter stitch, and then it has a panel of the Trondheim rose or the Trondheim rosa. And what I did was I adapted this um, Shetland like a cat's paw into the Trondheim rose. So you have this kind of three-dimensional, let me see if you can see it a bit better. You have this kind of three-dimensional rose in the center and that goes all the way across the width of the hap until you get uh, to the other end and you're decreasing down to this little uh, hilsen or message uh, on the, the very end. The top of it is, I have a very special design at the top. This is the forest path. You're creating the path along the top and I have the rustic edging of the forest floor uh, as the bottom, which also creates a sort of ribbing uh, edge. Now this color is just also happens to be the color of the most modern Trondheim folk costume or Trunderbunad. This is the Gloria color. So this is a Bunad color from a Bunad that has been recently restored historically. It is a, they call it the black uh, bunad, but it is uh, black and golden. So this is the Gloria colorway. And what was important to me with this hap uh, is to represent my region of Norway traditionally. And that's why it has the Trondheim rose and all of the colors. So I wanna show you all of the colors. The first color is the, I'm not gonna say most popular, but it's the color that you'll see most in the city of Trondheim. This is the Trönderblå, or the Trondheim blue color. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw that this hap I knit for my daughter and her bunad, and I showed all of the ways, I photographed all of the ways that I designed this hap to be worn. So I wanted this hap to have a lot of versatility. I showed how it can be folded symmetrically into a beautiful uh, scarf. It can be worn in a cowl, it can be worn tied like the traditional hap. It can be worn wrapped around your shoulders. I, as I say, you can see all of those pictures of my daughter. But this color, the Trondheim blue, represents the fjord. So Emma's father is from Trondheim and that's closest to the fjord. So this is that color. 
The other traditional colors are the green and the red. Trundu rö and grön. So there are two bunads. The bunads, uh, the red bunad and this one. Now, these represent the land and the mountain. Most of the time it depends on where your father is from. I am going to have a mountain field bunad made for me very soon because I've lived here for 25 years and I'm choosing the green color. In the villages you'll see lots more of the red and the green outside of the city of Trondheim. These are actually the three traditional colors. This is the modern color but you'll see these three colors most often in the Rusamaling from this region. So that's my sunshine on the path hap. The next hap that I released is my most recent design. This design is my fifth design. There are actually seven haps in the collection in total. There are a pair of socks, there are mittens and mitts, and there's a hat. So all of the things that you need to take to the forest path to guide the sheep up into the mountain and the forest glade. This time of year is the berry picking year and if you notice around in the forest and the fields the bluebells are blooming, the blueberries are ready, the raspberries are ready, the, the wild cranberries currants, blackberries, all of that is happening. And I released uh, this pattern especially to tell this story. So this is an extra large triangular hap. Extra large. It is a traditional Shetland lace which I have modified to represent the heather or the bush that the blueberries grow on or the wild cranberries grow on. And in the middle of each of the bushes I have created a knitted bobble. I hope you can see. There you go. You can see the texture of the knitted bobble. This is a very simple bobble. It doesn't uh, take a crochet hook or anything. You just knit along. It, you'll knit this bobble. I have embellished it with small tassels and I absolutely loved designing and knitting this hat. It's full of texture. It can be worn so many ways. I've worn it so many ways now. I've been wearing it out berry picking. So you could knit it if your favorite berry is raspberry. You could knit it in a beautiful deep pink. You could knit it in red if you love wild cranberries. You could knit it in a black for blackberries. A beautiful chartreuse for gooseberries also that grow here. I've created a special path right down the center. Well, I hope you can see the lace. It's light and airy. There's so much drape to this hap. Really love this one. I've knit, I think I'm on my fourth one. I don't mind knitting these haps over and over. They're mindless. I've knit them simplistically like the historic farm haps. I've knit them so that you can basically learn the repeat in one or two goes and then you just then you just knit. They're made out of 100% Norwegian wool. I've used Rome Finelgarn. I've used it because it's local to me. It's sustainably made. It's affordable and that allows everyone, I hope, to purchase the yarn and to be a part of making something really beautiful. It's knit on a larger needle than recommended by the uh, yarn so that you get this gorgeous uh, drape. So those are my haps. 
I am working on my next design, which also tells the story of the forest path. I am finishing up my mitten design and my shepherd sock design, which I'll be showing soon on Instagram. I wanted to share that I have a beautiful collaboration together with my friend Jill at Birdie and Poppet. If you are knitting the haps, you will be very excited to know that we have Forest Path Collection knitting bags. The first design was a, a summer design and it was very light to represent the daylight that we have, the 24 hour daylight. Now as we move toward darkness, we have uh, chosen a bit darker fabric. Uh, it has a beautiful handle. Uh, for carrying. It has a coordinating zipper. It has beautiful coordinating fabric inside. Uh, it's a beautiful size bag. It has a box shaped bottom and I have created a beautiful shepherd zipper pull that shows the uh, journey along the path. Of course this one is the girl shepherd but I can very easily change that to a male shepherd. These will be in my farm shop very soon. They've just arrived, so I'm very excited about that. The other thing I'd like to share is that it is August now. I've started a new knitting bag book. I had a lot of people ask me about the knitting bag book. Let me know if you're interested. I'd like to do a, a little course on the knitting bag book. I'd like to show you how I used it through illness and mental health challenges, how I use it to inspire me and my creativity and to help me with things I'm worried about or struggling with. Or I use it for so many things. If you're new to my vlog, then you won't know all of those things, but I have a template that could help you. If you're interested in a little mini course on starting and using the knitting bag book and how to implement it in your everyday making, just let me know. Contact me on Instagram and I will do a series of videos on the knitting bag book. That's really what I wanted to share with you today. I, I look forward to the course. I'll be very busy with that over the autumn. I am going to be saying goodbye to my children as they head to university. So I'm, I'm using my knitting bag book a lot for those feelings and uh, ways to keep myself focused and cross off my worries about them being, well, especially my son being so far away. This is a wonderful tool for anything going on in your life to journal about, to inspire you, to keep you focused, to keep you present. It's a sort of a daily meditational habit that I have kept for many years now. Every month I start, on the first of the month, I start a new uh, little book that I keep tucked into my knitting bag. And before I start knitting uh, or before I start any kind of project, I just check in with myself. It's, a, it's an interesting uh, process and technique that I use to yeah, keep myself centered. Thank you for joining me today. It is, uh, I wish I was out in the forest talking to you uh, amongst my flock, but as I say, the pouring rain and the weather has brought me inside the farmhouse today. Uh, I'm looking forward to teaching the course and visiting with you again and sharing my upcoming design with you. Until then, I hope you'll take care, find comfort in your making, and uh, I'll see you next time, friends.